Welcome to our unusual venue for, for this. I, I went to the wrong room myself this morning. So, uh, it's a pleasure to have everybody here uh, for our season, final production of the season, this production of Magic Flute. Um, I have to admit, I'm, I, I have never been a lover of Magic Flute over the years, although one of the first shows I did here was a Magic Flute that was a tour with uh, that Eric Simonson directed, so I, I've done it a few times. I've never been a fan, but I, I, I'm hoping that my mind gets changed mm -hmm. this time around. Um, and, you know, for me, it's uh, exciting to be doing something that I think is really going to be fun and people are really going to enjoy. And just coming down and watching some of the rehearsals, it's really so interesting process-wise that I think it's going to translate into something really amazing. So, um, and the best part of today is, of course, I get to introduce Dale Johnson, our wonderful artistic director. Um, we, uh, a couple of years ago, um, Floyd Anderson and I were in New York for a resident artist auditions. And we were having breakfast with this wonderful British agent uh, named Robert Gilder. And uh, Robert came in all a flutter, saying, Dale and Floyd, I have just seen the most marvelous, perhaps the best magic flute I've ever seen. And, uh, and we said, really? Because that's really making quite a statement. <laughs> and because uh, uh, magic flute is hard to do. And, and, it's, and, and if you succeed, it's really quite a good thing. He said, the Kormische Opera in Berlin has created the most incredible production of the Magic Flute, and you must go on their website and look at it. So we were going to do auditions, and there was a particularly slow patch of singers um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that we were listening to, and so I pointed my computer towards the Komisch Opera Berlin website. <laughs> and rather than, the, and I was looking at the singers and typing away. <laughs> and, and then, and then the, this trailer that I, probably everybody in this room has not seen by now, um, began to play. And of course, I couldn't have the sound on or anything like that, but it was like the most marvelous image uh, that I, I just was like freaking out. And so, you know, and so I was smiling and typing <laughs> and, and watching this. And so then the singer was gone and I said, Floyd, you gotta look at this. So he pointed his computer towards it and he was like smiling and typing. And, and, and we, at that point, we came back to Minnesota a few days later and immediately got in touch with uh, 1927, the theater company uh, in London. Uh, and they also then, uh, they were really terrific uh, to, uh, to talk with. And they immediately told us who to contact at the Komische Oper Berlin. And um, I, uh, we got, a, of course, a full DVD of the production. And uh, it, it's really an extraordinary, striking, strikingly different way to do opera. And I, I think it's, uh, it's a real step forward. It's a real interesting uh, experiment that is extraordinarily successful, not only in the, at the Komische Opera, uh, but also at Los Angeles Opera, which did it recently. Um, and there are calls coming in all over the world to various companies about doing this production. Uh, and so I, I think it's really wonderful uh, that we're a part of this. And we have, uh, you know, when we started casting the show, uh, we made sure that everybody, first of all, wasn't afraid of heights, because uh, that was really number one. And uh, that's really all we could sort of talk about, um, was we didn't really quite know the mechanism of this, but it's just that, this is what you, that you were really going to be up off the ground. And it didn't look like there was too much underneath you uh, as well. So we began to cast this show. Um, and we started searching sort of far and wide. We didn't really just always look sort of in the same places. And so it's, it's, been, it's really been terrific to sort of look for new singers. We have several singers debuting with us this year. Uh, and two of those singers are singing the role of Tamino. In the first cast, we, from France, we have uh, Julien Baer. 
And uh, uh, another tenor, where are you, Aaron? Aaron, in the back. Interestingly enough, Aaron auditioned for the Resident Artist Program here some years ago. And uh, he was very smart at that time, saying that he wanted to sort of remain with his teacher. And, and we just thought, what a great thing for you to say. <laughs> so now we have, uh, we've discovered Aaron again, just again by accident. He came across our path. And, and so uh, Aaron Blake is debuting with Minnesota Opera now. Um, the Pamina in uh, The Magic Flute is patterned a little bit off after the silent movie uh, icon, Louise Brooks. Uh, and if you, she, she, her most famous role was Lulu. Uh, and uh, the look of it is really very interesting. And, and uh, so uh, we were very happy. Matthew Horner, who's a great friend of Minnesota Opera, suggested this wonderful young Canadian soprano named Leila Clare would be perfect as a role. And we think he's right. She's magnificent. And I was just complimenting her because uh, I just, I finally met her this morning. We both have colds, so we decided not to touch each other. And, and I said, I, I was admiring your bravery, because the first time I saw her, she was like up there, just sort of really going for it. So Layla Claire, welcome to Minnesota. <laughs> And we also, in the Resonaris program, have somebody who is also perfect for the role of Pamina. And this is her last year here with Minnesota Opera. Where are you, Christy? Christy Hagenbaum. <laughs> now, Papageno, uh, as Jesse Bloomberg says, Papageno is supposed to come out and be an asshole. <laughs> uh, which I thought was a really strange <laughs> description of Papageno. I never heard that with Papageno. He clarifies a little bit later. <laughs> but um, I must say that uh, it was a real pleasure because Papageno is a very specific character as well. And to have these two guys, both who have sung with us uh, several, several times, Andy Wilkowski in the first cast. <laughs> And Jesse Greenberg uh, in the second cast. It's so great to have you two assholes work. <laughs> um, uh, tormenting their lives uh, is Monastatos, uh, and that is wonderfully played by John Lindsay. Yeah. The, the Queen of the Night is not here yet because essentially she sits and sings. Uh, and, and so we, she could come in a little bit later. She's an American singer, but lives in Europe. Her name's Jennifer Olofsson, and, and she sings just beautifully. It's gonna be really great. Uh, Zorastro, uh, who also kind of sits and sings, uh, is uh, Kristen Salimba. <laughs> Our three ladies, uh, one of the three ladies uh, is here. Um, the lovely Victoria of Argos is here with us today. <laughs> Uh, the other two ladies are Trish Van E and Bergen Baker. Who is Bergen here? I, didn't, I think she's off she's doing off. her thing. Uh, and then our Papa Gain is also somebody who's sung a lot with us, Tracy Engelman as well. Our armored men are Rob Askloff, who was the dancing master, of course, in Mental Let's Go, uh, and Matt Opitz. Where are you, Matt? Over there. <laughs> All of this uh, wonderful score is going to be conducted, and I'm so excited about this, by Aaron Bride. Yeah. Where are you? Um, and it's a real pleasure, I have to say, uh, because this production is, is really rather difficult to do and, and so specific uh, that we're really, really happy and very, very lucky to, to have uh, Tobias Rublitsky here from the Komische Opera Berlin. So I'd love to introduce Tobias. Good morning. <laughs> Um, before I start, we want to celebrate the birthday of Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, happy birthday, all together now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ricky. Happy So now, back to the magic flute. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, as you all know, we are re already rehearsing since one and a half years. Uh, no, it's not years, okay. although it feels like <laughs> quite a long time. No, uh, weeks. So, uh, but we make a very good progress, and I must say, I have much fun. I hope the others too. Um, uh, so, uh, sh uh, just a short introduction to the flute by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. You all know the opera is quite often done in Germany especially. It's the most given opera in Germany. Um, so uh, it, is, it is a very strange opera because it has many, many mysteries around, him, uh, around it because you don't know what is the real answer to do the magic flute. So it's very ambivalent. It's written for uh, a very broad public in Vienna. At the Volks, uh, it's the Freihaus Theater auf der Wieden, so an uh, audience which came from the whole city of Vienna, more or less. And you have also a very ambivalent yeah, kind of ideas that are all involved and all packed in this magic flute. So on the one side, you have a very funny, funny side of this opera. So you have a character based uh, or very well connected to uh, Hans Wurst, like it is typical for Volkstheater in Wien. It's the Papageno, of course, like uh, coming from Commedia dell'arte. Um, and then on the other side, you have the Syria characters like Pamina, who is, uh, yeah, who is more or less a serious character. And uh, like also Syria music, like the Queen of the Night's aria that are yeah, a bit reminding to the Baroque times. And on the other side, the sing, like, yeah, song character of Papageno. And uh, so to have all this together, it's really a challenge always to direct a magic flute because you never know what is the right answer, where do you want to put your eye on, and so on. And um, now this production tries to get everything together and to to show how ambivalent it is. So you will find very funny parts, but also very clear situations like the aria of Pamina where you really get into the emotion of, of a woman that searches for love because that is the <coughs> yeah that is the main topic of the whole opera. It's a search for love. Uh, of Tamino, of Pamina and as well of Papageno who's always searching for love. And in a way, in a very special way also of the three ladies of course. Um, so, and uh, I think everybody who, who will see this show, he will, uh, this production, will find its, his own way and its own um, interests. So one will more concentrate on um, kind of the fairy tale that get alive in, in using um, projections and animation film. <coughs> Another will, um, uh, will enjoy the homage to the silent movie connected with Mozart's music. So, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's a, it's a show that everybody can, can see in its own way, like a, a kid to the grown-ups. So it's, it's a very, very broad public as it meant to be. Um, so uh, as you know, the, the uh, opera is not called just flute, but magic flute. It means it's a magic opera. So it's about, yeah, everything is possible to happen in this magic world. And we travel together with Tamino, Pamba, Papageno and Tamina, uh, Pamina through this world. And so the uh, animation film is perfect for this opera, of course, because you are uh, able to show an endless number of set design uh, possibilities. So um, to give you, so we, we decided to do the, the, uh, the meet and greet here to give you an impression of what awaits you in the show. So um, we are able to, to meet a, a real dragon. And, um, and this is also, so it's the start of the opera. And, uh, uh, to, to give the tennis a rest, we take Daniel to show us now the panic tenor, panic and tenor at the beginning of the show. So, and what is better than to begin a show with a running tenor, huh? Um, uh, so. I'm not a tenor. <laughs> so that's why he won't say. <laughs> but to show you the picture of our dragon, so our solution for the, for the big snake that is behind Tamino, let's begin. Um, so you see, he's, uh, just start the, the cue again, please. And I can also tell you about how it works. So we have about 800, I, I never counted them, 800 cues that are given on music. And, um, <laughs> So to, to, give the, to give the tennis the, the possibility to sing as well, uh, they don't have to run while they are singing, so they're just pretending to run, but it's exhausting enough to do this the whole time. And uh, so we give you the next picture. 
um, to see our dragon once. There he comes, and he comes closer and closer. And it's, yeah, it's a dangerous thing. <laughs> yeah, and there it is. Yeah. And give the next picture. And then it comes really close, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And at the end, the next picture, it's over with him. And next, and he's in the mouth of the dragon. So that is what you can. You can pretend very much. Uh, the, the set, uh, just some words about the set. So this is the original set. Um, we have six doors, as you see. So we have five on the upper level and one here. And this door is able to turn <coughs> together with the floor or without. So they, we have very, very quick scene changes. And the singers more or less never go on stage by themselves. So it, it happens from time to time, of course. But normally, uh, when they are on the upper level, they always get turned in. So you are, they are fixed or they are strapped to the wall with harnesses and the door turns and they are directly in the scene as soon as the light gets on. And um, so we have uh, also, you, just to tell you what we have here on stage. So we have this, this marks on stage because of course the film is, is set on a certain position. So the singers have now to learn how to, uh, yeah, where to stand or where to, where to get their light because uh, the light doesn't follow them, so they follow the light. That is a special thing when you act with movies. Um, but uh, first of all, just have a look at, um, yeah, why also is this opera made for more for film? Just to give the other uh, idea of the magic flute. The magic flute is they are all searching for pictures, and it's a it's an opera that is full of very extreme pictures. So you have this uh, aria that is sung by Tamino. It's just about a picture. So he wants to get Pamina, who is presented first by a picture that is sent to him by the Queen of the Night. And also Papageno is always searching for the perfect, yeah, the perfect wife. It is like, like an idea. And so the silent movie is a very, very good, uh, so the movie is, uh, is a very good, um, in, yeah, it, it's a, a very good, um, uh, oh, the word. Uh, so it's really very good connection to the magic flute as it is also all about pictures and searching for pictures and one picture after another and really extreme changes in between them. Um, the style of action, as we already saw a bit in his face maybe, <laughs> is the style of silent movie. So uh, that is what we have to find and so the characters are, ba uh, ba uh, yeah, are based on uh, characters of the silent movie era. Um, for example, you, you already heard uh, Louis Brooks for Pamina uh, in Box of Pandora, very uh, famous. And uh, we have uh, Papageno is uh, Buster Keaton. Because Papageno is not just the happy man, he's always a bit sad. So he's a sad clown and Buster Keaton is the perfect, uh, uh, perfect character for that. And we have, uh, as the third character, just to introduce you, it's uh, Monostatos, uh, Nosferatu, of course, because Nosferatu is the vampire of the early 20s. So it's very, very good for, for this, our 10th. So um, we have all these really strong characters that you also know already, so it's really fun to look at this. What now the challenge is, um, for the singers is to know everything what happens on stage because uh, different to normal action they they don't uh, experience the room around them because the room is more or less behind them and they have to get so used to all the cues and all that happens and to know how it looks from 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 the uh, from the public to get the film alive so um, they really have to know every second of their action to get on the right time to the right spot. And this is quite a challenge. And um, so, but we, as I said, we make a very good progress so far and we are yeah, very far with something as I'm more or less through the whole piece. So it's, it's, uh, it's then good to get into repetition and to get it alive and alive and more alive. So um, to complete the picture of silent movie, um, we don't use uh, 
speaking scenes between, like it is in the original. So we decided to take, like it is in a silent movie, we take text plates and they are connected to Mozart's music. So perhaps we can give you an impression of one text plate. It's the first. Okay, just. And. <clears throat> is sure to arrive. <laughs> He's there. Okay, so you see, uh, of course, we uh, we take a piano like it is used to be. Uh, they used to be uh, uh, use it in the silent movies, but our piano is of course an old piano. It's a Hammer Klavier to get the connection to Mozart back, and the music is original Mozart. So of course, sometimes a bit interpret in in the way of the action, yeah, a bit more dramatic sometimes. Um, so. Um, this is so far everything about the, what is important for this kind of how we do it. Now, um, I think uh, we, we missed one cast member I have to introduce to you because he's, he's uh, I think uh, he's the perfect, perfect cast member because he's always on time, does everything right, and it's never too late to rehearsals. Uh, but we, uh, it, he's very important, so it's a fellow and the friend of Papageno, because Papageno is uh, always together with his, um, yeah, you'll see Karl Heinz. Uh, let's, let's see just a moment Karl Heinz coming on stage, uh, because he's too important that we can miss him. So the next cue, there you come. Yeah. <laughs> and you notice directly that Papageno is really sad when he sends Karl Heinz away in his third aria at the end before he wants to kill himself. That's then really terrible. But yeah, Karl Heinz is very nice. <laughs> it's very <nice> already. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Talking about creatures that we can, uh, yeah. So it's uh, the, this this uh, production is stuffed full of animals, um, and I, I'd like to show you before we end um, some some animals that we were missing. I think we thought about to show you the Queen of the Night, as you know. So she's not really uh, really in scenic action, but uh, she's just standing the whole time. But that doesn't mean that she doesn't do anything. So just have a look at the Queen of the Night for a moment. Um, there she is. She's, yeah, a bit strange. In a way. Uh, so that is why everybody is so afraid of her. Um, and this will work just to give you the idea. She will have a white cocoon about uh, above her body, and we just see her face. And so all what she has to do is really big face acting while she sings and to stand without moving. That is quite a challenge for her as well, too, because it's a very, very dramatic aria. And not to move at all is, uh, yeah, that, that is always something you have to get used to first. Um, so this is the Queen of the Night. And um, uh, I think another thing that we can show you is, uh, what's the next for the elephants already? Pink, yeah, pink. yeah, yeah, we have also a nice um, pink elephants coming around. So <laughs> Papageno, uh, it's the area of Papageno's Mädchen oder Weibchen. And you see, uh, he doesn't drink a glass of wine, like in the opera, he gets a pink martini or whatever that is. <laughs> and as he drinks it, <laughs> yeah, everything changes. <laughs> Give the next cue, and then suddenly, what's coming up? He's, yeah, of course he gets drunk, and then, <laughs> and next, he sees pink elephants. <laughs> so, you see, there are many surprises that uh, are waiting for us, and that we have to bring alive. And yeah, and it's, so as you saw, for example, this, the hiccups. 
So Papageno, uh, they are given on music and Papageno has to know them all to get them. Otherwise, we don't believe that there were any gaps at all. So just the picture is not everything. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of work to do, and but we did already much. And so I can just say enjoy the show when it's on stage. <laughs> Until then, we enjoy the rehearsals. So if there are any questions, please ask. But that's it. Great. Thanks all, and there's no food uh, out there, and uh, I, well, I certainly want to thank everybody in this room for a, a fantastic uh, 2014 season. It's been a real, a real extraordinary year, and this is going to really top it off beautifully. Thank you very much.